Hello, everyone, and welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Gavin Hatch. This past Friday, I paid a visit to Disney's Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Let's get started at Animal Kingdom. I have not been here in a few months, so I wanted to see some of the progress of lots of the construction that's been going on throughout the park. The Tree of Life is being worked on nightly as it's prepared for an all-new Nighttime Spectacular, debuting in probably 2017. You can see here the crane used to hoist construction workers up is covered during the day with a green tarp, making it less noticeable to guests' eyes. Walking towards what used to be the entrance to Camp Mini Mickey, you can see they also have tarps covering up the path the cranes use to come and go from the site. Close by at the Disney Outfitter store, walls are still up as additions to the store are made. I have not heard of exactly what is being placed in the new extended space, but I'm guessing it has to be more space for the new merchandise as new lands open in the coming years. Now some say the space is going to be the home of the new Starbucks location in Animal Kingdom, but I also hear this will be the future location. You find this building right outside the entrance to Africa. Animal Kingdom is the only theme park now in Central Florida without a Starbucks location. Disney announced in 2013 that all four parks would receive their own Starbucks themed to the park. Now, I was in the park on Friday the 22nd, the day before the new Harambe Market opened to guests, so I was unable to get pictures of the new extended area themed to the fictional African village. Leaving Harambe, I got some shots of the construction taking place on Discovery River. This will be the home of the announced nighttime spectacular titled Rivers of Light. Over by the Gibbons Ape exhibit, a walkway was added for guests to use to get easier access to the entrance of the Cali River Rapids attraction. This will assist in keeping the walkway in front of the animal's exhibit less congested and allows it easier for guests to stop and watch the Gibbons play. Moving on through Asia, coming up to Expedition Everest, you will notice lots of construction walls around the river. I was able to get some shots at opened areas of the wall. Here you can see what looks to be an area for guests to view the show in front of Theater in the Wild, home to Fanny Nemo the Musical. I assume it will look similar to the viewing area that was added in Disney's California Adventure Park for World of Color back in 2010. On the other side of the bridge, I saw some of the crew preparing a barge for what looks to be used for waste or dirt. A lot of guests had stopped here to watch the men at work. Just past Finding Nemo the Musical and across from Dinoland USA, you will see even more walls in place. Here's a shot of what's being done on the other side of the wall across from the entrance of Expedition Everest. Announced in 2014, Rivers of Light promises to be an innovative show unlike anything ever seen in Disney parks. Combining live music, floating lanterns, water screens, and animal imagery, the show will come to life on Discovery River, between Discovery Island and Expedition Everest. When I look at the concept art, the first thing that comes to mind is World of Color, so I'm really excited to see how it will differ. Right outside Dinoland USA, I spotted this recently added counter service window location called Isle of Java, serving coffee, pastries, and frozen beverages. Changes are taking place next to that at what used to be Flame Tree Barbecue. I have not heard if it's just being refurbished or if it's an all new dining option. It served great barbecue ribs, chicken, and fresh salads. Let's hop over to Disney's Hollywood Studios and take a quick look at some of the entertainment and activities offered at Star Wars Weekends. Coming into the park, you will see a tent set up with cast members on hand to answer questions and hand out an event guide. It is great to see the sorcerer hat finally gone, but because of the event, the temporary stage is back up in front of the great movie ride. Behind the stage, you can see that a fresh coat of paint has been applied to the attraction, now since it's going to be a focal point when guests are making their way into the park. Behind the stage, you can see that new palm trees were added where the hat once stood. In the animation courtyard, the entrance to Disney Junior Live was moved, and an all-new meet-and-greet section was added for guests to meet with Doc McStuffins. This year, you can meet Darth Vader in a new location. He is meeting with guests over at what used to be the entrance of the Backlot Tour that closed in September of last year. Darth Small was moved to what used to be where the Backlot Tour would depart and drop guests off. At Darth Small, you will find character meet-and-greets and retail locations, one of which is located at what used to be the prop warehouse that guests would wait in for the studio tour. If you are a fan of unique Star Wars artwork, make sure you check this place out. Close by, I spotted this in the streets of America. Mr. Gold Pawnbroker and Antiques Dealer is a Storybrook location featured on ABC's Once Upon a Time and Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. It first appeared in the fourth episode of the first season of Once Upon a Time. I wonder if this will be a future merchandise location themed to the store found on the show. 
Well, that does it for this edition of Photo Finds. I hope all of you had a wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend. And for those of you that have served and sacrificed in the defense of our nation, thank you for everything you've done. We know that freedom doesn't come free. Until next time, make sure you get out, have fun, and enjoy the parks.